This is the sixth part of a series of videos about multivariable calculus using the computer program Mathematica. It's also the sixth part of a subseries about calculations with parametric curves. In this video, we will be parameterizing what's called a cubic curve and figuring out where the tangent line to that curve is vertical and horizontal. We'll actually be doing some calculus in this video, where we, whereas we really haven't in the five videos to this point. All right, here's our example. First of all, we've got this equation, y squared equals x cubed plus x squared. That defines something called the cubic curve in the plane that we can try to graph here with the command I showed you in the last video called contour plot. But part A of this problem says, make a guess, and I do emphasize that it's a guess, at how to parameterize this curve with parametric equations. Well, we're not going to be able to make a guess and hopefully have a chance of being right without actually seeing the graph and understanding what it look, looks like. Contour plot is a way to do that. It plots equations even if you haven't solved them for y as a function of x. When you use it, you need to use double equal signs and that's Mathematica's way of knowing that you want it to solve some equations. There's other commands where you use double equal signs to solve equations. I'm going to type this real fast. I've explained how to use this in the last video. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here fully. What I'm doing with the rest of this is trying to make it look nice. By default, contour plot doesn't put a frame, uh, puts a frame in there, but I don't like to have the frame in there. So I'm going to make that false. It doesn't put axes in there, but I want them in there, so I'm going to put axes zero or true. I will label my axes with x and y, like this. Make these bigger. And what we will see is the plot of this cubic curve. It's kind of a pretty curve. And now we want to guess a parameterization for that. What are parameterizations? Again, they are systems of two equations, typically as functions of time. Not always, but typically. x is a function of time, f of t. y is a function of time, I'll call that g of t. We do need to guess the answer here, and it's no guarantee that this is going to be right, other than the fact that I made the example simple enough, enough for this to work. For most examples, you would probably not be able to guess the exact right answer. Or, you know, there are actually infinitely many answers, um, but you probably wouldn't be able to guess any of them. Focus on the x-coordinate first. If we start down here in the lower right, say, x is going to start out positive, decrease down to negative values, have a minimum at x equals negative 1 before increasing back into positive values again. The simplest example I can think of of a function that does that is f of t equals t squared minus 1. And again, we're just sort of crossing our fingers and hoping that works. What about y? Again, if I follow this kind of motion, starting in the lower right, going up, then around the loop, then back up again, y is going to start out with negative values, increase to positive values before decreasing back to negative values again, before increasing back to positive values again. It's a cubic. t cubed is not good enough. You want it, that won't decrease. That's going to be a function that always increases. t cubed minus t, that will work. I'll call that g of t. That will be a function that has that kind of behavior. But again, there's no guarantee that it definitely works. We need to now verify, confirm this guess algebraically. How? We need to plug f of t in place of x in this equation and simplify, figure out how that depends on t. Then plug g of t in place of y on the other side of the equation and see if it simplifies to the same function of t. That's how we, in effect, eliminate the parameter in this situation. So. In this expression, x cubed plus x squared, wherever I see an x, I replace it with t squared minus 1. So first I have to cube t squared minus 1 before squaring t squared minus 1 and adding those things together. Now we need to simplify, expand this out, either with Pascal's triangle or the binomial theorem. What you should get if you do that is t to the 6th minus 3t to the 4th plus 3 t squared minus 1. Next, square this thing out with the FOIL method if you like. Get a plus t to the fourth minus 2 t squared plus 1. This can be simplified a bit to t to the sixth minus 2 t to the fourth 
plus t squared, and then the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel. How about the other one? How about what happens with y squared when you replace y with t cubed minus t? That's what we'll do next. Replace y with t cubed minus t. We need to square that with the FOIL method. We'll get t to the sixth minus 2 t to the fourth plus t squared. We do indeed get the exact same thing as we got back here when simplified. This confirms that the point c of t equals f of t comma g of t, which equals t squared minus 1 comma t cubed minus t, is always on the cubic curve defined by the equation y squared equals x cubed plus x squared. Okay, that does it. It doesn't actually prove, this is not enough to prove that it traces out the entire curve as t goes from, say, minus infinity to plus infinity. It does, based also on the nature of these functions and how f goes to plus infinity as t goes to plus or minus infinity, y goes to plus infinity as t goes to plus infinity, and it goes to minus infinity as t goes to minus infinity. With those facts, you can also prove it parameterizes the entire curve. Next. We want to find values of t, if any, where the tangent line to this curve is vertical and where it's horizontal. You can see there are such points. One right here where it's vertical, and you can guess what the point is. x is negative 1, y is 0. And then two right here and here where the tangent line is horizontal. It's unclear exactly what those points are. First figure out where those are in terms of t, then ultimately figure out what the x and y coordinates of those points are. All right, now we get into it an actual little bit of calculus, <clears throat> excuse me. If you think of this in terms of motion, x and y are functions of time. The point is moving as time goes by. You're going to be at this place where you've got the vertical tangent when, instantaneously speaking, there's no motion in the x direction. The x component of the velocity, so to speak, is zero. You're going to get a vertical tangent when dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to time, which is f prime of t, is 0. Since f prime of t is 2t, that will imply that the tangent line is vertical when t is 0. Actually, the dy dt would have to be non-zero at this point as well. It will be this will be the value of t when you've got a vertical tangent line. How about the horizontal tangent line? That's going to be when there's no velocity, instantaneously speaking, in the y direction. When dy dt, the derivative with respect to y, is 0. When g prime of t is 0, if I set that equal to 0 and solve for t, after finding the derivative, I'm going to get the equation 3t squared minus 1 equals 0, which will imply t is plus or minus um, 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so we've got three values, one where it's vertical, two where it's horizontal, and that makes sense if you think about the picture. What about the x and y coordinates of those points? We're going to have a vertical tangent um, at the point c of 0, whose coordinates will be f of 0 and g of 0. Plug in 0 into f, get negative 1. Plug in 0 into g, get 0. Just like we predicted at the point negative 1, comma 0. And it's going to be horizontal at c, uh, uh, the value c when you plug in plus or minus 1 over root 3. Plug those into f and g. Let's have Mathematica do, do it to save time. Let's, let's simplify. Um, plug it into f. Well, actually, you'll get, that's pretty easy. You'll get 1 third minus 1, whether you plus in, plug in plus or minus 1 third. That's going to be negative two-thirds. 
The other one's not too hard either, but I'll just do it here. If you plug in plus square root of three into G, we've got a cubic, cubit, and then subtract it. That simplifies to negative two over three root three. It's a minus sign when we plug in t equals uh, positive square root of three. It's a plus sign when we plug in t equals negative square root of three. So I could actually type this as a um, minus plus instead of a plus minus. Those are gonna be the points where the tangent line is horizontal. All right, here's your exercise. I made your exercise easier this time as opposed to what I've done in the previous times. In this case, I'm not, I don't have a given cubic curve for you to parameterize. I'm just asking you to take this system of parametric equations and graph it. Then do the, find the values of t where it's, the tangent is vertical and horizontal, and then find the x and y coordinates of these points. All right, try that right now. Pause the video. When you're back, I'll show you the work, the answer. Here's the graph. You can use this parametric mode on your calculator to make this graph. It's, this is kind of a pretty graph as well. There it is. Turns out the tangent line is vertical at t equals 1 half and horizontal when t is negative 2 and 1. You can use derivatives to figure that out, like you see here. The corresponding xy coordinates are given by these things right here. And I also made an animation where I put those points in the picture, those blue dots that you see there. So we see the motion, there's a horizontal, then vertical, then horizontal tangent. I'll let you look at that again, and then I'll end the video.